Hello. Leon Schuster. Yes. Welcome to Loud Radio to the Sports Illustrated show. How are you today, sir? I'm fine, thank you. And I'm talking to Gareth. Don, Don, Simone, and Skala. and Skulk. Is that right? That is yeah, correct. Right. Hello, Leon. <laughs> uh, Leon, so lucky to have a Sports Illustrated model with you, and she's got such a nice name, Simone. <laughs> in Afrikaans, they would say Simone. She became a double training. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leon. I wish you were here, though. Yeah, man. Are you are you right in Cape Town now? We yes. Ah, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not lucky in hard things. It's the best place to be in the world, Cape Town. You're so lucky. There, Leon, uh, we actually, well, let's start off at the top because you've been an avid box supporter and out and about in terms of coming out with songs pre-World Cups, etc., etc. Um, where do you stand on what's going on in Bok Rugby? Views, thoughts? <laughs> You know, I'm very negative at this point in time. I was You're very hopeful initially after Ina Kamayer was appointed coach. But I mean, I think it's two out of six now. Two wins and four losses, you know. That's just not good enough. I'm sorry. The material is there. The talent is there in this country. Um, I can only say that there must be something wrong with the coaching staff. I mean, you look at New Zealand. The, the pattern of play that they that they execute is just fantastic. The way Richie McCall gathers the ball from those rucks without getting penalised because he knows his rules <laughs> and he's a pitcher, and that the way that back line can swing the ball between backs and forwards is just fantastic. We have absolutely none of that. I'm sorry to say it, we have none of that. We are so stereotyped in our back line, it's just not true. We advertise what we're going to do next. It's so obvious. Either it's going to be a high kick and charge, or it's going to go to the, the, the inside centre, and then it's going to die, and it's going to be a loose ball, and it's going to come out again to a prop, and he's going to run into somebody else. And that's, that's old-fashioned rugby, you know. I really hoped that Heineke would bring in a new dimension in our rugby but it doesn't seem that it's happening he's had enough uh, time now already to do it you know you find your feet after two or three matches but i mean six and 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 a pathetic performance against uh, a brilliant all black side don't let's underestimate their talent so they are the best in the world maybe the best rugby team that there ever was yeah but for for the number two in the world to go and lose like that is a bit of a scandal. I'm sorry to say that. It's not lack to, to swallow that. Now, and I mean, talking about the All Blacks, because they're, they're, they're on their way to setting all sorts of records in terms of unbeaten. Um, but as you say, I mean, first and foremost, Sam Whitelock, that try that he scored, uh, he was the first forward to score for the All Blacks in the Rugby Championship this season. 18 tries they scored, only one of them scored by someone in the pack. The other 17 all by the back line, uh, which talks yeah. again to the kind of rugby that you're talking about. Even though the forwards do mix it up in the back line, it's, uh, it's, it's the backs that, that end up scoring from the work that they do. But they now, I stand corrected, 16 straight... And they're playing. Yes, that's right. And they're now they're playing Australia in two weeks' time, followed by Scotland, Italy, Wales, and England, which could put them on 21 unbeaten by the end of the year. And then they'll play three tests in June next year against some weakness or other, because the Lions will be on tour in yeah. Australia. Uh, so by the time the rugby championship starts next year, they could be 24 without a loss. Absolutely. And I can bet my hat that that will be the case. There is no chance that any team in the world, except I thought the box had it. Not Australia. We beat Australia quite easily in the last uh, the last time we played against them. England is pathetic at the moment. Wales won't come near them. I don't know if they're playing Wales. I don't yes. exactly know what the program is. But there's no team that'll that'll touch these guys. Not even a British and uh, Irish Lions side will touch these guys. That's why I'm saying. Do you remember the 1974 Lions team that was labelled up to this day actually as one of the best? One of the best. Uh, Willie John McBride was yep. the captain. They were labelled as one of the best Lions or rugby uh, test teams ever in international rugby. But I believe this All Black side, as it is today, is the best side that there ever was in the world. 
So it's going to be very, very difficult for any side to beat them. And they, they're humble, you know. They're not, they're not boasting about their performances. They, they're just nice, down-to-earth guys. Richie McCall, when he talks, you know, he's humble, he's down-to-earth. He, he doesn't pat himself on the shoulder. He gives the credit to his teammates and to his coach and to the fans supporting him. So I think Richie McCall also must be the captain in the world, the best captain of the international rugby side ever because this guy just goes from strength to strength to strength no matter how much older he's getting in the meantime, no matter how many punches his body takes, he's just getting better and better and if you have a captain like that with leadership qualities like he has, motivational skills, I mean it's very difficult to, to lose against a team and a captain like that and a, and a fantastic coaching staff obviously well I mean and he picked up his 100th win I know Gareth it was his 100th win in 112 tests Gareth's got a question for you yeah Leon how's it um, I, I, know, I know you're saying it's um, it's all pretty negative uh, and I think uh, that we all kind of agree at this time it's, it's been a bit of a tough start um, do you think Hanneke can turn it around do you think we can we can put a bit of a positive spin on at the end of the year and get ready for next year or do you think that it's it's you know, too much has been kind of squandered this year already. Too much back, too many backward steps. You know, we'll do, we'll definitely do better on this European tour that we normally take towards the end of the year. I don't know exact, exactly against whom we're going to play, but normally it's England and maybe Ireland. Sometimes it's Wales. <clears throat> so those teams, you know, we can beat them all because they're not excellent teams. It's the All Blacks we want to beat, and and I don't know with. You know, the, the last guy that had a fantastic record in South African rugby, I think we had 14 successive wins, if I'm not mistaken, was when the Nick Mallet was the coach. Now Nick Mallet is sitting in Nas Das Sportcast <laughs> talking about rugby instead of being on the field coaching rugby. A combination of Nick Mallet and somebody like Jake White, that's the type of people we need in our rugby. But it seems that the, the big bosses, the top bras, don't like these guys for what they did in the past, whether they sinned or whether they <clears throat> upset them, I don't know. But certainly there are people in South Africa that are technically so, so sound. Rugby knowledge so excellent that we can do much better than we are doing. This backline coach of the box, with all respect, I don't even know this guy. I don't know where he comes from. <laughs> What, what is his track record, you know? Uh, those are the things that one questions. And I don't think, I'm sorry to say this, and it's not that I dislike Heineke, it's not a personal thing at all. But Heineke comes out of the Blue Bull stable where they are used to doing one thing, and that is kicking the ball high, charging, and trying to score out of those situations. The first time that things seem to improve a little bit, was in the game against Australia. But we all know that this Australian side is not the best that there ever was. I mean, uh, Sharp is on his way out. There's a lot of older guys in the team. We should have beaten them in the World Cup already, you know, although I don't believe we would have beaten the All Blacks. So to answer your question, I'm sorry to say, I don't think the current coaching staff of the box is going to improve anything within the next, uh, or let's say until after the tour and when the next Tri Nations come along or when the next test against the All Blacks come along. I think we should make a change. The sooner the better, but we all know they signed contracts for three or four years, which is a very, very uh, unfortunate thing because if somebody doesn't perform, if I make a bad movie, they're going to kick my ass. The investors are going to kick my ass if they didn't make profit and they're not going to invest in me again. How can we invest in a coach that doesn't give us winning rugby? That's my question. Uh, Leon, it's Simone here. I wanted to ask yes, you, what would you do if you were the book coach? Well, I'd just study. I'd study the, the, the modern pattern of play, the modern way of playing rugby. Mm. And we are certainly not doing that, you know. It's having a ball fetcher there. A guy who can stay on his feet without getting a penalty, dig the ball out, get it to the scrum half as fast as possible, spread it down the line as fast as possible. We tend to wait. Ron Pinar stands there, tapping his feet, tapping his feet, waiting the ball is out. 
but he's not playing it. Then the defense has already been organized, waiting for us, because they know exactly what we're going to do. As I said, we advertise. So I would just study the modern pattern of rugby between, let's say, the All Blacks and France and maybe a bit of England, because there is a new trend in rugby, and that is spreading the ball as fast as you can down the back line to the wing and wide. Get the ball wide. The wider the ball can go uh, at the back, the better. I just think it needs to be a more technical approach. It needs to, to, have to be a study about what rugby is about today. It's not about kicking the ball high and charging and hoping to get tries anymore. That was in the days of, of Mof Meiber and Frick de Pri, and that's, that's old fun, old fashioned rugby. Leon Skalki, so? Um, yes, Skalki. Ik ben een ongelukkig Engels praat, man. Twee boeren met een twee, twee twee Engels praat met elkaar. So for, forgive my accent. Um, but <laughs> How many Cheetahs players are you wanting to see in the box team then? Uh, uh, Heinrich Brasso used to be the guy that I wanted to see in there. But of late, after his injury, he's never reached the peak that he had when he played for the Springboks. So, um, I don't really know. The, the Cheetahs aren't faring that well at the moment. So, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Let's talk about that quickly. That, um, okay. That's for my, it sort of, it's a worry for me that I think Heineke isn't considering him really. I think, I think, he's, still, I think he's still good enough. Um, I, I think I he still is good enough. But you know, you also get demotivated when you're not being selected. You know, that guy, I think if you give him a chance, even if you put him on the bench mm. and you bring him on for 10 minutes against the All Blacks, he's going to show his work. Mm. Mm. But he feels neglect neglected at this point in time. And I think that's why he's, not, he's a bit disinterested, you know, because yeah. he feels, oh, I'm not going to be in the box side th anymore. So yeah. I don't have to give my best. I'm not going to put my body on the line like I used to do. And he's a small guy, but he's in the class of a Richie McCall. We mm. need somebody there, like oh, and the, the, the three loose forwards of the All Blacks. We thought we had a good combination. We don't have a bad combination, mm. but mm. we don't have a guy that can go and grind and dig the ball out there. I think that's one of our problems. I think our props are fine between Becker and, and Etzebet, whom I admire greatly. He's fantastic. Um, we've got quality players there. It's just that they are not train correctly. That's what I staunchly believe. Mm, mm. You know, I can't, I'm not going to criticize Heineken Meyer's choice of players. Uh, like we say, it can maybe be a Brasso. It can be, maybe be a better fullback than Kirshner because I think there is somebody in the country that might be better. But mm. he's good enough. And if you look at the back line, Habana is good. The back line is solid, you mm. know, with Huisen there. And, and as I said, against Australia, it seemed like we were going to uh, we, we're going to sort of follow on, onto this trend that we started there, but we just we just folded against the All Blacks for some reason, and I think it was just a matter of them running so wild and so so fast and so immaculately playing this game, running rugby that they do, that we just didn't have a chance. We were confused. <laughs> <laughs> we, but I've been in our first 20, 25, 30 minutes to ons a little bit gekeer het om nie die bal, weet ons die bal bykie by hulle weggehou het, het ons actually nie, yeah. nie, nie te bad gelijk he. Maar ek ben die, yeah, op, jy, jy, weet, jy weet dat die All Blacks altijd die bal, the All Blacks, they're always going to get their hands on the ball and then they're going to start creating chaos, but in, in those first 20 minutes or so, we did actually, we did quite well in starving them yeah. of possession. Look, yeah. I think defensively we were naive in the second half. To concede a try inside yeah, 15 seconds the from the restart, you, you know, every restart they're challenging for the ball, we're not, yeah. even on our own ball. Absolutely. Um, and, you and, know, and then, but, but you also look at the fact that there's, there's t six players under the age of 21 or 21 or younger in that squad. Now, you, Absolutely. you fa fast fantastic. forward three years and those guys are 24, 25, the All Blacks, what have they got coming through the ranks? Not saying that they don't. They so, always have. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, out of interest, though, the, the on, because, I mean, a big bugbear with a lot of us is the fact that these guys have been playing Super Rugby, inbound tour from England, Rugby Championship, and now they're all being fast-tracked back into the Curry Cup. I mean, the Bulls have got seven box back, all of them in the starting lineup for this weekend. Um, 
you know, where do we draw the line as, as South African rugby that says it should be Boca first and and Province second? Um, well, don't don't the All Blacks have the same? They've got a trophy that they play for that is similar to our Curry Cup. Yeah, they got the and NPC. I think that is that is being contended right now. Aren't the All, the all Blacks also going to go back to to no. those teams? Or they are don't they play. No, they don't play there. Their top be, be they, kept aside. Their top guys are all rested. They, they and, and the difference there is that they that they centrally contract them in New Zealand. So. The, the All Black oh, okay. Rugby Union has control over whether the players can go back and play for their provinces, whereas here, you know, we don't really have any of that. On the Curry Cup, Leon, who do you think is going to win it? Because, yeah. I mean, it's all still open. The, the Bulls, even though they're bottom... You, you know, that's the problem. That's the problem that you're talking about. Uh, let me just quickly say this. I would also not... I don't like the idea of the Lions performing well at this point in time without any box or, or current box in their side you know, and they're doing a fantastic job. And all of a sudden, the Blue Bulls get their box back and the, the Western Province get their box back and the Lions are very few box, as we know. So it's actually an unfair situation because now the balance is going to swing from uh, a solid provincial side to a side with many box included in the side. And maybe that's going to make the Lions not as good as they look at the moment. So I would really, I, I agree exactly with what the All Blacks are doing. I would not let the Springboks go back to play Curry Cup. These guys are fools. They need a break. They need a rest. November is just around the corner. Then they've got to go on a tour again. So why the hell put them in the Curry Cup? You know, let the Curry Cup be for the provinces, for the provincial guys with no current box. That's what I would say. I think it's, it's an unfair situation towards the provinces that are currently faring well in the Curry Cup. Uh, Leon, enough of the rugby. What's going on in your world? Any movies coming out? Songs? Albums? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm getting a bit, uh, a bit long in the tooth now, as they say. I'm, I'm taking it a, a bit easy after my last, my last movie. I heard yesterday that I need a knee replacement, which is a hell of an operation. I don't mind the operation. I only mind the pain because I'm a sissy for pain. And I can't have guys clapping me around in my candid movies with a short <laughs> knee so I've got to do this first and but my next movie will certainly be a movie about South Africa and the, the state that it's in at the moment and pranking style uh, comedy because I mean if you just look at the billboards against the lamppost there's a movie in every bloody billboard there's 712 <laughs> movies in Jacob Zuma there's 414 movies in Julius Malema and skits, you know, so I mean, with, with what's going on in the ANC and with all these boycotts happening and uh, no petrol and, and I don't know what's going to happen, so I think one should make a movie where you predict what's going to happen in the future like we did in, in Sweet and Short and send up the whole system a little bit and then like let somebody say shucks your country needs you make us laugh again and go into a candid camera movie that's what the people want from me first and foremost they want to see me getting donored <laughs> I, I definitely want to <laughs> so, <laughs> so you, you, the public has got this. at this stage you've got a lot in common with Anika Maya then people want to see you yeah, both donored yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely Leon Schuster, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us on the Sports Illustrated show on Loud Radio. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. And thanks. It was an honor for me, too. I hope that your show is going to rock the nation. I wish you all success and everything good with the new show. Uh, I hope it's going to work like a bomb. And I hope I can meet Simon one of these days. I Simone, hope so, too, Simone. Leon. I'd love that. <laughs> Okay, well, when I'm in Cape, I'm going to make a plan, okay? <laughs> okay, please do. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> uh, thanks. I'll take you to dinner in a very romantic restaurant. <laughs> oh, that sounds fantastic. I'll <laughs> 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 before the time, okay? Okay, <laughs> thanks, perfect. Leon, Leon Schuster, thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, okay, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.